Hi friends, so in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to spotlight in Zoom. So in another video earlier, and I will link to that, I talked about pinning in Zoom, and this week we're gonna talk about spotlighting in Zoom. How do you do it? What does it mean? Why should you even spotlight? We're gonna get into it, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in this video. Before we jump into the content, I do wanna remind you to like, subscribe, so you get notified every single Monday when I drop new videos. I'm currently working on a lot of videos that are all about Zoom and virtual events, but have some really exciting new categories coming up in the next couple months, so make sure you turn on those notifications so you find out when my latest video drops. So what is spotlighting? Spotlighting in Zoom is a way to control speaker view. And here's where I know I might get, I might lose some people because we just talked about pinning in another video and pinning is something that affects your personal view. You can pin somebody no matter if you're the host or you're just an attendee. And so it's a really useful skill just to know at any virtual Zoom meeting you go to. And so I guess that's, start with that. Spotlighting is a function in Zoom meeting and it allows you to control the speaker view. So we're here in Zoom and you can see I have three devices connected up top. You see essentially three iterations of myself. Um, one of the nuances with spotlighting is you have to have at least three people in the meeting to be able to spotlight. Seems a little odd, but makes sense because you don't really need spotlighting if there's only two of you because the speaker view would just kind of jump back and forth or you're in gallery. But anytime you're over three people in a Zoom meeting, you can spotlight them. So right now I'm in gallery view. And so anytime I wanna spotlight someone, you see when I toggle my mouse over their video screen, you can see this little ask to unmute and three little dots come up in the upper right hand corner. So I'm the host of this meeting. Anybody who's a host or a co-host is able to do this function and will see this when they toggle their um, mouse over somebody's video. So you see three little dots in the upper right corner, and then you go down, you see spotlight for everyone. So if you click that, this gives me a notification because it says I've been spotlighted. Maybe I should unmute myself, but I won't right now. Um, and so now I'm spotlighted for everyone. So now anyone who is in speaker view would just see me even if I wasn't talking. So this is a fun way in your events if you want to highlight someone who just won a prize or you want to I don't know, recognize someone in some way, but you don't want them speaking per se, and it won't follow them unless they say something in speaker view, you can spotlight them. They can wave, have their moment, and then you can just, if you, t you see with your mouse in the upper right corner, it just says remove from spotlight, and it's gonna go back to the next active speaker. Now, one of the cool things with spotlighting is you can spotlight for everyone. You can spotlight one person. You can spotlight two people. You can spotlight three people. Um, you can have all the way up into nine, until nine people, so you'd be in a three by three grid. Now, one of the cool things for this is if you're running a Zoom meeting, you're using Zoom meeting to run a virtual panel, this is a great way where you can dynamically spotlight all of the panelists and then say one person like myself, I'm giving a longer remarks in an answer to a question. You can then just remove the other panelists from the spotlight. Um, and I give my longer answer. Thank you so much for all those good questions. And then say my question's done. And so with spotlighting, you can either add, remove, or replace. Three ways. Add spotlight, remove spotlight, replace spotlight. So when you add someone, like we did just before, I just add them to the spotlight. All right, now they're up here and they've been added. Now if I wanna remove myself, say, you'll see down here it says remove spotlight. So I'll remove spotlight. Then you can also say, oh, what if I had one speaker here, they're talking and I would really like them to, I just wanna replace them with someone else. So say it's the moderator asks a question and says, um, you know, Jennifer, what do you think about that question? And let's pretend this is Jennifer. I can actually just replace Spotlight, which does the two functions at once. It adds and it removes. So with Spotlighting, so you can always replace someone, even if we had two people up here, let me add us to the Spotlight. So there's two of us up here. And let's say we wanna call on somebody else. You can hit replace and it will automatically clear the other two speakers. So one of the things I love with Spotlighting is it's a great tool to play with what people are seeing on screen. And so it's not consistently the same talking heads. Nothing in virtual events I feel like is worse than just watching the same thing for an hour. And so with spotlighting and Zoom meeting, it gives you the ability to kind of play with what people are focusing on. It allows you to control exactly who they're speaking. And I also really like it because in big meetings, it's sometimes hard to mute or unmute everyone. And if you are giving participants the ability to unmute themselves for some reason, like you want them to be able to ask questions whenever, it does give you that ability to, mute, to keep the spotlight on certain people, even if like someone coughs. 
um, or I've used it too with um, panelists and the moderator wants to have time where they are not in the center of the screen to be looking at questions from the chat. And so I will add that moderator in for my panel, have them ask the question, and then I will actually remove them. So they're just, you'd still see them up in the top, like you see me, um, but they're not the center of attention. So it's something you can play with spotlighting. My favorite way to spotlight, honestly, is just toggling over people's, um, people's views uh, or people's windows. But another option too is if you go down here into the participants and you click participants, it'll open a pop-up on the side. And then you'll see when you toggle over people's name, it's confusing because there's three of me in this meeting for the example. But um, when you toggle over it, um, you'll see this little blue pills show up. You wanna click more that little more button, it actually would then let you spotlight from there. So I've worked with several other virtual event producers who have all their own preferences on how they like to um, control spotlighting. So you definitely have these abilities to, to do it from, from the side angle um, or from the participant list, or you can do it the way I'm talking about. That is just doing it from the um, over toggling over their windows. So that's how you spotlight in Zoom. And that's one of the big reasons, like I said earlier, about why is just to control what people are seeing. It's a really fun and dynamic tool to play with. I know it can get confusing of the difference between spotlighting and pinning. And I've had many a client who kind of verbally mixes them up, but I will again link to that video about how to pin. So if you just watch that and watch this again, hopefully you can kind of understand the difference with pinning being very local, local meaning you're affecting only your personal view, spotlighting, if you are the host or co-host, you can spotlight, you can't do it if you're just an attendee and it affects the speaker view for everyone. So you're controlling exactly what everyone sees. Bonus tip with spotlighting, the, minute, the first time you spotlight something, it will automatically take control of everybody's computer and put them all in speaker view. After that initial spotlight, anyone can always click back to gallery view and be able to see everyone. See, for example, here we have three people, two people on screen. I can still go back to gallery view and see all of us just like we're in gallery view. And it wouldn't change, say I'm removing this person from a spotlight. It just changed our order, but it doesn't change me still staying here in gallery view. This is helpful because some speakers like to see their entire uh, audience that they're talking to. And so remind them that in their tech check to say, oh, you can just click over to gallery view and you can see everybody. But if you want to get the most out of our presentation, we suggest that you are in speaker view. And yeah, so that's spotlighting with Zoom. Hopefully that helped answer a couple of your questions. I'm Logan Clements, freelance event producer, and this has been another installment of my favorite tips and tricks when it comes to event production, strategy, and running your own business. And I will talk to you guys again next week. Bye.